Happy Monday to you. Today we have several SpaceX stories, including the flight plan being released for the first orbital Starship test. We'll also be discussing a deal that was inked between NASA and Axiom Space for the first private astronaut mission to the ISS, and more. Strap in and let's prep for launch. Welcome back to Let's Get Techie. First up on today's flight schedule are a few stories from SpaceX. As covered in last week's episode, unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that SpaceX was finally successful in landing a Starship prototype. The flight of SN15 went beautifully. I briefly mentioned in last week's episode that SpaceX was considering reflying SN15, and we got word this week that they've moved SN15 back to the launch pad. According to Testmania, on Tuesday, May 11th, SpaceX began the process of moving SN15 from the landing pad to a nearby test mount at the launch pad known as Pad B. This points to us likely seeing a reflight of SN15 prior to moving on to SN16, although I would caution you to keep in mind there was a time not too long ago where we saw two starships right beside one another at the launch pad. This had a lot of us asking why they would keep two prototypes so close to one another as catastrophic failure of one could lead to damage or loss of the other. This means there's always a chance that we could see SN16 roll out to the pad and line up next to SN15. If this happens, it's anyone's best guess as to which one will fly first. Knowing Elon, they may draw straws or play a game of go fish to make that decision. Either way, this is incredibly exciting news because reflying a starship, if successful, proves the platform is in fact reusable. Believe it or not, even after everything SpaceX has accomplished, they still have doubters who don't believe they can do everything Elon claims they will. Speaking of Starship and things SpaceX claim they will do, we saw a story this week over at Space Flight Now stating that SpaceX had released a flight plan for their first orbital test flight of Starship. This will be a roughly 90 minute test flight with the entire platform as a whole. They will launch from Starbase, Texas, and ultimately perform a controlled re-entry, I'm looking at you, China, and splash down in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. This is noteworthy for a few reasons. First, this will be the first all-up test of Starship, meaning it's a chance to prove the platform as a whole and also collect an incredible amount of data. Second, since it's an orbital flight, it will require more than just Starship itself to reach orbit. As discussed in previous videos, due to Earth's relatively strong gravity well, you can't make it to orbit with a single stage vehicle. At least it hasn't been done yet. This means to accomplish their flight, they will be sitting Starship atop their in-development booster they call Super Heavy. And Super Heavy it is. If you thought Starship was a big craft, Super Heavy is gargantuan. If SpaceX sticks to the original plan for the first Super Heavy prototype, it will ride a pillar of fire from a total of 28 full-flow stage combustion cycle Raptor engines. For perspective, Starship currently does its 10-kilometer test using three Raptors. Can you imagine 28 of them firing all at once? Well, lucky for you, you don't have to imagine it because SpaceX has already created a render of what this could look like. First, take a look at the fins at the base of Starship, which is about two-fifths of the way down from the top of the rocket. Just beneath those is where Starship couples with Super Heavy, which shows off how much larger Super Heavy is. At liftoff, SpaceX will presumably light all 28 Raptors producing 16 million pounds of thrust. Barring any catastrophe, Starship will lift off and continue under the power of Super Heavy for almost three minutes. Upon Super Heavy spending the majority of its fuel, it will then separate from Starship and return to Earth, making a splashdown 12 miles offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. In its final form, however, SpaceX will have Super Heavy return to Starbase for a vertical landing similar to how their current Falcon 9s land. However, they're planning to catch the booster rather than use landing legs. On this flight, after Super Heavy separates, Starship will then ignite its own six Raptor engines and one minute later begin its challenge of reaching orbital velocity. SpaceX expects this to occur about nine minutes later with the craft going approximately 17,000 miles per hour. Unfortunately for this test flight, Starship will have a similar fate to its friend Super Heavy, as they will be landing Starship about 60 miles off the northwest coast of Hawaii. I use air quotes when I say landing because they are actually just going to let that sucker flop over into the water after their landing burn is complete. Think of a game of Jenga, where your slightly less coordinated friend pulls the bottom block and the whole tower comes crashing down. Only this tower is made of stainless steel and is 174 feet tall. 
We can't wait to see their first attempt at an orbital test flight. Make sure you get subscribed for this and plenty more SpaceX coverage in the future. Our last SpaceX story on this week's flight schedule is yet another historic milestone SpaceX has accomplished. So think back to December of 2015. What were you doing? Maybe unwrapping Apple's first generation Apple Watch for Christmas? Maybe laughing at Volkswagen for cheating on emissions and getting caught? Well, SpaceX was busy finally landing one of their operational Falcon 9 boosters on land for the very first time. Fast forward five and a half years and they've now landed 83 Falcon 9 boosters, some on land and some at sea, and they've reflown 64 boosters. To add to these accomplishments, last week SpaceX landed booster number B1051 for the 10th time. This booster has had a long life and now has 10 missions under its belt. Gone are the days of letting a booster fall into the ocean to never be used again. Well, at least if your name's SpaceX. SpaceX tends to fly these high mission count boosters when sending one of their own payloads into orbit, and tradition was not broken with this one. B-1051 sent yet another batch of 60 Starlink satellites into orbit. As mentioned in a previous video, this will help bolster their already class-leading satellite internet performance, and it's just a cherry on top that they're able to launch these satellites using a booster that a customer has already paid for. Don't get me wrong, these reflights are absolutely not free, but being able to reuse boosters very much lowers the cost of getting a payload to space. Huge congrats to the team over at SpaceX for this accomplishment. We can't wait to see a booster make landing number 11 in the future. Next up on this week's flight schedule is a sad one. Unfortunately, Peter Beck and the folks over at Rocket Lab have had another failure which caused the loss of two customer satellites. According to Space.com, the launch failure occurred less than three minutes after liftoff from Rocket Lab's Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand. The failure led to the loss of two Earth-observing satellites for the company Black Sky. While we don't know exactly what happened or what failed, Rocket Lab stated the issue occurred shortly after Stage 2 ignition. They added they were deeply sorry to both Black Sky and Spaceflight, the company that had arranged the flight. Shortly after separation, the camera mounted aboard the second stage of Electron showed ignition followed by a sharp sideways motion, which in space launch business is always a bad thing. Come to think of it, a sharp sideways motion is almost always a bad thing in general. One silver lining from this mission worth noting is that the first stage of Electron did parachute back down to Earth for a soft splashdown and recovery. This is part of Rocket Lab's new initiative to reuse portions of their rockets similar to SpaceX. Moving right along to the next story on today's flight schedule, there's big news from NASA and Axiom Space. Last week, the two inked a deal for the first private astronaut mission to the ISS. According to NASA, the mission dubbed AX-1 will launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida and travel to the International Space Station where the Axiom astronauts will spend eight days aboard the orbiting lab. Since this mission is at least partly to bolster American interest in space, the AX-1 crew won't be riding a Russian-built Soyuz rocket. Additionally, since Boeing seemingly hasn't been able to get its act together and produce a flight-ready Starliner capsule, Axiom has contracted none other than good old SpaceX for their taxi ride to the ISS. The crew will be riding aboard the now infamous Crew Dragon atop SpaceX's Workhorse Falcon 9 rocket. The launch is scheduled for no earlier than January 2022, and as usual, we could very well see this date slip depending on logistics. Regardless, we're very much looking forward to seeing the first private astronaut flight to the ISS. Make sure to get subscribed for future updates on the AX-1 mission. Speaking of private citizens visiting the ISS, if schedules are kept, Japanese billionaire Yusaka Maezawa will be visiting the ISS prior to the AX-1 crew. According to Space.com, he is planning on taking a film producer along with him to share the video of his experience right here on YouTube. Yusaka is known for starting the fashion retail website Zozo Town, which is now Japan's largest retail website. Those of you who follow space and don't do much online shopping in Japan may instead know Yusaka from his partnership with Elon Musk and SpaceX. In 2017, he contracted SpaceX for a lunar flyby mission using their Dragon spacecraft. In 2018, that idea was scrapped, and now they plan on using Starship for the mission after development is complete and it's ready for operational use. This is expected to take place sometime in 2023. For this mission to the ISS, however, Yusaka will ride aboard a Russian Soyuz rocket 
for a 12-day mission that was organized by Virginia-based company Space Adventures. The current time frame for this mission, if the schedule doesn't slip, is December 8th of this year. While Space Adventures didn't disclose the cost of this trip, previous space tourists have reportedly paid between $20 and $40 million. Man, it must be nice to be rich. And while there were plenty more stories this week, unfortunately that's all we have time for in this episode. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to get subscribed if you aren't already, and click the bell icon for notifications when a new Space News episode goes live. Do you think SpaceX's first orbital launch of Starship will be successful? Assuming you're independently wealthy, would you be willing to take a trip to the ISS? Blast off in the comments below. We appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one.